Thanks for watching TechWiki. Click the subscribe button, then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. Remember when every time you had a power outage, you had to go through this frustration where you had to reset the time on your VCR and somehow no one in the house could figure out how to do it? No, no, no one else remember that? Maybe I'm just getting old. Anyway, those days are mostly a memory now, as gadgets like computers and smartphones can set the time themselves either because engineers thought it would be a useful feature, or maybe because they don't trust us to adjust the clocks ourselves after setting up the VCR somehow became a meme, like before the internet. But how exactly do they do this? Let's start out by talking about phones, which perhaps unsurprisingly receive a time signal from the cellular network. So you can easily check to see if this feature is turned on here in Android and here in iOS. However, if you're using a Windows PC, it's actually set by default to fetch the time every so often from an internet time server. Pretty straightforward sounding, right? But where exactly do these sources get their times from? Is there like a gigantic master clock somewhere that's even bigger than Big Ben? Like kind of like the, the Linksys router for the internet in South Park? Now, that was an old episode too. Boy, I'm getting old. Surprisingly, the answer is actually sort of. Most time servers and cell networks ultimately get their time from atomic clocks because they are incredibly accurate thanks to having virtually no drift. For example, if you've got a cheap quartz wristwatch and you set it accurately, you can expect it to perhaps be off by a few seconds a month later. It's not perfect, but it's not too bad. But if you're building a clock that's supposed to be the standard for millions of devices worldwide, that just ain't gonna cut it. Instead, atomic clocks work by, you guessed it, using the properties of individual atoms to keep time. So the US government's main pair of atomic clocks called NISTF1 and F2 use atoms of cesium, a metal that actually melts on a warm summer's day as their timekeeping mechanism. These atoms get bombarded with microwaves, which cause the electrons buzzing around these atoms to become excited or to change energy states, if you think back to high school chemistry, which boy was a long time ago for me. And these state changes happen billions of times per second. In fact, a cesium atom will oscillate a fixed number of times every second, this many, exactly. Because every atom of pure cesium-133 is the same, this electron jumping behavior is very consistent and predictable to the point where the scientific definition of a second isn't 1 60th of a minute, but rather the amount of time it takes a cesium atom to oscillate this many times. This consistency makes atomic clocks extremely accurate. So the NIST F2 clock is accurate to one second in 300 million years. So if you were to sync up your DVR to it, you could still be confident that it'll record the Super Bowl at the right time in a few million years when the NFL has finally given up on using Roman numerals. And the awesome thing is that tapping into the power of these clocks is so easy. If you're using Windows, your date and time settings actually has a spot for you to punch in a network time protocol or NTP server that will pull the time from an atomic clock or you can connect a little more directly to the United States atomic clock system by selecting time.nist.gov from the drop-down menu. Meanwhile, cellular networks often grab the time from GPS satellites, which have their own built-in atomic clocks, and then pass them along to your phone. And then if you're going somewhere where you won't have service, you can actually even download apps that can connect your phone directly to the GPS so that you can run on atomic time, although, Obviously, this would be more of a battery hog. Finally, surprisingly, even some traditional clocks and watches can receive special radio signals from stations around the world that are dedicated to just broadcasting atomic time. But do remember that because of network latency and other types of overhead, the time on your PC, phone, or watch might not match the atomic clocks exactly. So the next time you show up 50 milliseconds late for work and your boss is razzing you, you can, just, you can just blame it on bad reception. 
Speaking of bad, you know what's bad? Not having a repair kit from iFixit. iFixit loves to teach people how to take their stuff apart, fix it, and put it back together. And they are leading the charge in the electronics repair tools industry with their iconic black and blue ProTech toolkit, and it's now only $59.95. It's got a ton of features. It's compact and easy to store. It's got their 64-bit driver kit with a wide variety of plastic opening tools, spudgers, and picks so you can safely poke and pry. It's got a suction cup with a new fancy handle to remove display assemblies. It's got their own rubber-handled Jimmy Pry tool and DSD safe tweezers. And all the tools are backed by iFixit's lifetime warranty. One of the coolest things is that you don't even need to buy something to get access to iFixit's free repair resources. You can check out over 25,000 free repair guides over at iFixit.com. And go to iFixit.com slash techquickie to snag the fully loaded ProTech toolkit, now only $59.95. Love that link below. So thanks for watching, guys. Like, dislike, check out our other channels. Videos, videos, sorry, for some reason we changed that. Leave a comment with a video suggestion if you have any, and don't forget to subscribe and follow. And the bell icon. Smash it. But don't destroy it. We need it to still work. Just maybe crack it. Yeah.